Pavel, uh, is there any answer in the markets to this, you know, let's assume uh, kind of removal of this much Russian oil from the market? And what's the clearing price if that's the case? And so Russia produces 10 million barrels a day. Seven million is exported. Of that, three and a half million goes by pipeline into the European market. Now, those pipelines will continue to operate unless there is a political decision in Europe to impose an embargo. This is something Ukraine has been um, pleading for since the beginning of the war. Um, or if there is a physical disruption, you know, missile strike, something like that. The, the, the more problematic issue is the other three million of exports from Russia, which are by tanker. International shipping companies do not want to touch Russian oil for a combination of, you know, ESG, shareholder pressure, and frankly, fear of legal liability. So we've already seen just in the first week of the war, about 2 million barrels a day of Russian exports cannot find a tanker to, you know, to take those barrels. Uh, and that may increase to, you know, three, three, even 4 million. Uh, we have seen just yesterday a decision by the IEA to release 60 million barrels from emergency stockpiles for the first time in 11 years, I might add. Uh, but that's a stopgap measure, uh, and the, the longer the war lasts, the more pressure there will be um, on these emergency stockpiles. So what is your best guess, then, as to what the market currently is positioned for in terms of how long, you know, these uh, restrictions might last, the unwillingness of shippers to, uh, to touch Russian oil? Uh, and I'm trying to get at the idea of just what exactly have we priced in and can we become comfortable that $100 plus oil is going to be here to stay or is this kind of a fleeting overshoot? A good rule of thumb is that the elasticity uh, between oil supply and price is five to one. So that means if you reduce supply by 1%, price goes up 5%. And Russia, 7, per, uh, 7 million barrels of exports, which is 7% of global supply. So theoretically, if all of that were to be you know, wiped out, uh, through, again, some kind of embargo policy, that would be an extra $30 a barrel uh, versus pre-war levels. So that would mean 120 130 bucks a barrel. You know, we're not that far from, from there today. So that, that tells us the market is pricing in something, you know, just shy of a worst-case scenario. What about the companies that have made moves on their own to exit Russia? Shell, BP, with the almost 20% stake in Rosneft, Total. How, how significant are those moves as far as energy production and what ultimately that's going to mean for those companies? Well, those are divestment decisions. And divestment is more symbolic in, in, in the sense that you know, those fields are not going anywhere. So if shareholder A is replaced by, by shareholder B, that does not physically disrupt the ability, you know, of, of, of Rosneft or Gazprom to pump as much as, as they can. I think the more the longer term perspective is there will be less foreign investment going into the Russian energy sector, less technology transfer, and Russia is dependent on, on Western technology for various kinds of drilling, deep water, and, and so forth. Uh, but that's not going to be a major cost to the Russian economy instantaneously, that will be you know multi-year uh, kind of sanction against the Kremlin. Pavel Moshinov, thank you for joining us. Another big move in oil prices. We appreciate it. When we come back, we will ask former Defense Secretary Mark Esper for his thoughts on the latest developments out of Ukraine and whether he thinks the current economic sanctions against Russia are doing enough to deter further aggression. You're watching closing.